Hello everyone and welcome back to Midland Public Library's Savvy Seniors, the short show where we discuss technology tips to make your life easier. My name is Jennifer Wick and I'm the Maker Place Coordinator here at MPL. Today we're going to be talking about fake news. I'm going to tackle some questions like what is fake news and what does it look like? How does fake news spread and how can you tell fact from fiction? Let's jump right in. All right, fake news is the topic and the topic is fake news. Let's start with the most obvious question. What is fake news? Okay, so what is fake news? Fake news is false or misleading information that is presented to you as news. Fake news stories attempt to pass off false claims or false information as real news, but are not supported by any credible evidence. Fake news often tries to imitate the style and appearance of real news articles with the intention of deceiving you. So fake news tries to look like real news, but it's not. Okay, why does fake news exist? Why are there people out there who want to deceive us and who are putting false information out into the world? What's going on? There are many different reasons, and these are only four. So first, financial gain. People and companies can both profit financially from fake news. So they can monetize their advertisements, their articles, and their websites um, so that they get money when people access their fake news, when people access their website or their information. Another reason is influence. Fake news can persuade people to believe something or to join a political movement. Um, so it can change people's opinions on things when you provide them with false information that supports a false claim. It sways their opinion and their thought process. Next is mischief. Sometimes people just like to cause trouble. And the reason is as simple as that. There are people out there who just like to cause problems. Okay, number four, um, accidents. So occasionally joke posts or satirical articles um, are mistaken as real news and then are uh, you know spread around the internet as such. So that is why fake news exists. So what does fake news look like? We know what it is. It's news that's not true, that's pretending to be true, and it exists for a bunch of different reasons. But what does it look like? How can we identify fake news? Um, so I'm going to start by talking about fake news websites. Uh, so fake news websites are websites that are made to look like real news sources, um, but they're not. So creators of fake news websites will use domain names and URLs that look really similar to real news sites. So a couple of examples is that www.newshound.com and www.patriotnews.co and www.nbcnews9.net. They all sound like they could be real news sources. They all look similar, like NBC sounds like that could be the correct news source. Um, but these are actually all fake sites. And so those URLs um, were chosen to help build their facade, um, to help convince you that they're real and help to deceive you. So fake news sites also um, create a format or imitate the format of real news sources so that they can look like a real news site. And so here I have a couple of examples for you. Um, the Daily News Feed, this looks like it could be a, a, a real reliable news source. I mean, they have Top News, USA, World and Entertainment, so they have the categories. It's organized well. It looks like it could be a legitimate news source. Here we see um, the, the headline for the article is HIV virus detected in Walmart bananas after 10-year-old boy contracts the virus. And so they have a picture of the banana looking like it is infected with HIV and they've stolen CNN News logo um, and put it on the article to try to make themselves look real. However, this is not a real article. Um, it is a false news story. It's fake news. Another one here, um, breaking Obama's mother-in-law charged with larceny and fraud. And you can see that they have a share to Facebook button. Um, it, it looks like something that you would be able to spread around and they've tried to make it look legitimate. So fake news websites often actually steal their content to make their jobs easier. And that's because of what their goal is. 
Um, so the goal of fake news sites is often to make money or to spread misinformation. And so it's faster and easier to just steal fake news from other fake news sites or satirical sites um, instead of writing their own content. And then so many fake news sites will sell advertising spaces on their web page um, so that they can make money. So they want to get as many people visiting their web page as possible so they can make money off of those advertisements. So they try to make their web page look trustworthy so that people will go to their sites. They'll have catchy headlines to make you click on their sites, right? And it'll increase their website's traffic, so the number of people visiting their website, and it helps them to make more money through their advertisements. Um, okay, so next let's talk about clickbait. So, I'll just move myself down here so we can read that. Clickbait is a story or an article that often is sensational or featuring a sensational headline. It's geared towards getting clicks. So clickbait is monetized, meaning that the more clicks they get, the more money they make. Um, it's not based on any particularly credible sources. They're often not well researched and are just kind of thrown together. Um, clickbait is comparable to tabloids. So if you take a second and think about what your newspaper looks like versus what a tabloid magazine looks like, uh, clickbait is kind of the tabloid of um, online news sources. So it's designed to really tug at your emotions. The writers of clickbait will use emotional words and they'll try to evoke your curiosity to convince you to click on their article. Um, they often use some of the following to entice readers into clicking their links. So they'll use shocking or amazing or unbelievable results because then you're gonna wanna click on it, right? The results will shock you. Um, it might be gossip, so it's going to be some sort of form of celebrity gossip that's going to intrigue you. Um, you'll never guess who's dating who kind of thing. So it's um, to make you want to click on that article to find out more. It'll be mysterious stories, so it'll feature some kind of mystery and you can only find the answer to that mystery by clicking on the link. They might be articles um, or a photo series showcasing people's lack of intelligence. So they'll, they'll use people's silly moments. Um, to make you click on the link so you can watch people doing silly things. Or they'll challenge your intelligence. So they'll say something like, um, only 4% of people are able to answer this quiz properly, right? It's challenging you and making you wanna prove that, well, I'm one of those 4% of people. They also use fear-inducing headlines. So they'll use things that are scary to make you wanna click on them to learn more, so they'll play on your fear. Next, they'll use lists. Um, so they'll give you um, the top 10 foods for losing weight. Click to see the list, right? So it's all things that they do to make you click on that link. So here's some examples really quickly. Um, so can you solve this ancient riddle? 90% of people gave the wrong answer. So that is an example of it playing on your intelligence. It's challenging you, right? Uh, six surprisingly common reasons you're gaining weight according to experts. So there's a list, right? Um, man tries to hug a wild lion. You won't believe what happens next. So here we go. Here we have um, a shocking headline, right? A man hugging a lion. How dangerous? Let's click and find out more. Over here, I can see the money-making secret that banks don't want you to know. So we have a mystery on our hands. What is this money-making secret? Let's click on it and find out. A uh, 14-year-old girl stabbed her little sister 40 times, police say. The reason why will shock you. So there's an example of that wording. They're using words like shock um, to try and pull you in. And you can see that this example here has even stolen the CNN uh, logo, just like the other one, um, to make themselves look more reliable and believable. Okay, next I want to talk to you about satire. So news satire is actually a type of parody. Um, they present themselves in the, in the format typical of mainstream journal, journalism, okay? But they're not meant to be fake news, so let me explain that a little bit more. Satirical news uses humor, irony, exaggeration, or ridicule to expose and criticize people's stupidity or vices, um, particularly in the context of contemporary politics and other issues, right? So they're using humor and jokes and outrageous headlines to point to something, to um, call something out or call something to your attention, to make fun of a policy that someone has put in, that a politician has put in place, um, or to call out an injustice. Um, they're using humor to draw your attention to an issue, right? 
but it's not meant to be fake news. It is meant to be satirical. But what happens a lot of the time is those fake news sites I was talking about will steal satirical articles and publish them as true, right? Or people will not realize that it's a satirical article and they'll spread it around as true. Um, so really, satirical um, news sources, telling the difference between them and fake news comes down to their intent, right? So if we look at this little comparison chart here, I have fake news, their definition and intention, and news satire, the definition and intention. So fake news um, are stories that are crafted to deceive or misinform you, where news satire are humor. It's using humor in their, in their title, right? And in their, in their writing. The intention is, is really the important part here. So the intention is to deceive or, or misinform the readers or viewers. So fake news is, is deliberately trying to um, spread misinformation or disinformation. They're trying to deceive you. Where news satire, their intention is to disapprove, exaggerate, um, attack, or criticize something. So they're really using humor as a tool to criticize what's going on in the world around them. Um, so that is a little bit on satire. Here's a couple of examples. So these are some websites that are satirical. So don't take them as real news. They're also not fake news though, right? They're satirical articles. They're meant to be funny or to call attention to things. So there's The Onion, The National Report, The Daily Mash, uh, The Spoof, The Beaverton, and Daily Buzz Live. So some examples of the types of headlines you're gonna see. Canada doesn't care about being left out of NAFTA talks, has cooler, more fun trade negotiations to go to anyway. So funny, right? Um, here we can see this is a really um, well-known satirical web source is the, uh, the Onion. So Bush, our long national nightmare of peace and prosperity is finally over. Uh, we have another one here. Trump locked out of White House after accidentally revoking own security clearance. So they're poking fun at Trump in that one. Here they're poking fun at the wall. Um, Trudeau promises Canadian citizens a wall. U.S. will pay. Right? So they're all just meant to be funny um, and call attention to world issues. Okay, so social media posts is another form of fake news. Uh, basically, fake news can be bundled into a social media post. So fake news. Um, can look like a poster advertisement. It might be in the form of a clickbait advertisement on your Facebook page. It could be a link to a fake news website, like the ones we talked about, um, that a friend of yours on Facebook has shared. It could be a satirical article, article that was mistaken for a real news story. Um, or it could be an entirely fake social media account or profile that is putting out fake information through posts. So there's a couple of different formats. And so just a little fun fact over here, common sources of fake news according to Canadians. So 68% of Canadians who took the CBC News poll um, said that they encountered fake news on Facebook. 65% said that they encountered social, uh, fake news on social media. 62% said it was through websites, 49% through YouTube, and 45% uh, through TV. So fake news really is kind of everywhere. Okay, so now that we've talked about what fake news is, kind of got an idea of uh, what it looks like. Um, and what forms it can take. Let's talk about how it spreads, so how it goes viral and how people start accessing this fake content, this false content. Unfortunately, the biggest culprit for sharing fake news is people like you and me. <laughs> um, the majority of fake news retransmissions is committed by real people. So social media users will often share stories on their Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or other platforms without fact checking them. So they'll see that, um, you know, Uncle Joe posted this and they'll share it too without actually fact checking the information. The research shows that people are actually more likely to share fake news than real news stories. And a part of the reason for that is because fake news stories really try to play on your personal biases and preferences. Um, They'll try to align with your personal beliefs, but with fake or false information. Um, and they'll use very, you know, shocking and deliberate headlines um, to make you more likely to click on them and then share them after. There's also something called trolls, and there's kind of two different types of trolls. Um, so the first. The first um, are troll people, and the second are troll accounts. So troll people 
are humans who hold an account on social media platforms. In order to generate comments that argue with people, they insult and they name call and they basically try to undermine the credibility of public figures, of other people, um, or of other ideologies. Um, they undermine the credibility of them because they disagree with their ideas. And so they will argue with people who post things that disagree with their ideas. Um, they support and advocate for fake news stories that they're ideologically aligned with. So they're going to support fake news stories, um, even if the information is fake, as long as the ideology matches up, they'll share those, um, those stories. Then there are troll accounts. Um, so troll accounts are accounts that are completely fake, so it's a made up person, so the account name might be Jennifer Johnston, um, but Jennifer is not a real person. So the account was created specifically to spread deceitful disinformation uh, for a number of reasons, including sowing division and mistrust. Um, so these accounts are only putting out fake information um, for one reason or another, and they're not even a real person. So trolls have been deployed on every major social media platform and there isn't really a way of um, avoiding them. You can only identify who a troll is and who isn't. So we'll talk a little bit about how to identify trolls in a minute, but those are the two different types of trolls and, um, and how they spread misinformation. So then there's also bots. So bots or robots. Um, help to propagate fake news and inflate the apparent popularity of fake news on social media. So there are these programmed um, computer entities basically that will like and share and spread information and make a fake news story seem like it's more popular than it actually is. So they're not physical entities like R2-D2 in Star Wars. Um, they reside on social media platforms created by someone with computer programming skills and they're comprised of nothing but computer code. Um, bots are computer algorithms that work online on social networks to execute tasks autonomously and repetitively. So once they're programmed to do something, they do it by themselves and they do it over and over and over again. So that could be sharing a fake news story, right? They simulate the behavior of human beings in social networks, so they interact with other users. Um, so that could be through liking things or sharing posts. They share information and they send messages. Um, and all, most of what they're sharing is going to consist of fake news and disinformation. So they are unfortunately a culprit of spreading fake news. So fact and fiction. Okay, so we know what fake news is, we know what it looks like, we know how it spreads. How on earth can you tell fact from fiction? How can you identify fake news? Let's talk about that. So I absolutely love this infographic. Um, it talks about how to spot fake news. So the first one, I think, is the most important. Consider the source. So where are you reading this information? Is it coming from a reliable news source or is it not, right? Is it coming from CBC or CNN? Is it or is it not? And is it their actual official website? Um, so one of the ways you can figure that out is when you're reading the article, click off of the article in their website. So go to their about page or their more information page or their mission statement page or their contact information and find out if they're the actual real CNN or if you know they're a CNN, cnn.nn.net and they're just a knockoff, right? Um, so check the source and see if it's reliable. So read beyond. So sometimes headlines can be outrageous in an effort to get clicks, but what's the whole story? So when you're reading, um, does the headline match up with what you're actually reading? Does it make sense? Um, kind of contextualize it with what you know and, and, and use your critical thinking skills while you're reading the article about whether it was just an outrageous effort to get you to read it um, or if this could actually be news. Next, you can check the author. So do a quick search on the author. Um, what are their credentials? Are they credible? So do they have a degree? Um, you know, or do they graduate from university? What's their resume look like, right? Look them up and see if they're someone to be trusted. Next, supporting sources. Most um, reliable news um, sites and articles are gonna have a list of where they got their information at the bottom. So they're gonna have a list of sources and links. Um, so you can go to those links and see does the information actually support what they're saying in the article? So do the, do the sources support the article? Um, are the sources reliable? 
news sources or are they not, right? Are they from an academic um, journal? Are they from another news source? Was there a study done? Where are they getting that information? Next, check the date. Um, like I said, these fake news websites like to steal content and so sometimes they'll just steal old news stories, tweak them a bit and post them. Um, so reposting old news stories doesn't mean that they're relevant to current events, right? So make sure you're checking the timeline on these things. Next, is it a joke? Is it meant to be satirical, right? Research the site and find out if it's a satirical website or not. Next, check your biases. So consider your own beliefs and how they could affect your judgment. So are you acting like an internet troll? Are you sharing information solely because it aligns with your personal ideologies? Um, did you fact check them before you shared them? Um, is it true, right? So check your own biases before you share things and make sure that they're not clouding your judgment about what you share. Next, you can ask the experts. You can come and talk to a librarian um, or you can consult a fact checking website. So here I have a list of fact checking websites for you. Um, facts Can is a great one. There's factcheck.org um, and a few others. So these are only four of hundreds, but basically these websites are gonna tell you what's true and what's not. They're super useful. You can also use the crap test. And I'm hoping that because the crap test has such a hilarious name, you will remember it. Um, so C-R-A-A-P stands for currency, relevance, authority, accuracy, and purpose. So currency, the timeliness of the information. Relevance, the importance of the information to your needs. Um, authority, the source of the information. Accuracy, the reliability, truthfulness, and correctness of the content. And finally, the purpose, the reason the information exists. So you should be evaluating whatever your source you're reading, whatever news article or Facebook post, using those topics. Let's talk about what each of those really means. So currency, when, the, when was the content written? So is it current or is it not? When was it published and has the content been updated, right? Relevance, why are you even reading this article? Um, does the article deliver what it promises to? Are the language and um, coverage appropriate, right? So is what you're reading really relevant um, to, to what you need? Next is authority. So does the author have an academic degree in the field like we talked about? Um, is the writer experienced? Does the writer use a systemic, systematic approach? Um, so really looking at the authority of the news source. So who is this person or this website to be telling you this information? Are they reliable? Which leads into accuracy. Has the author cited his or her sources? Are most of the sources scholarly or academic? If it was a study, have the results been replicated? Um, so just looking at whether or not the information is actually true. And next, purpose. What is the purpose of the article? Is the purpose to inform you on something? Or is it to sell you on something, whether that's an actual product or to sell you on an idea? What is the purpose? Um, any evidence of conflict of interest or a hidden agenda. So if we're talking about those human trolls that are trying to push um, their ideological beliefs, are they, is that the purpose of the content they're sharing? Um, if it is, is their personal bias affecting what they share? Is it going to be, um, do they fact check it or not, right? Okay. Um, and then I would say sometimes, it's as simple as a Google search. Google it. If you're not sure if this is a real site or not, Google it. Um, ask Google. There are some things to consider when you're using Google, but I'm hoping to do a how to perform an effective Google search um, Savvy Seniors video in the future, so hopefully I'll answer some of those questions. But Google generally is going to tell you if something is real or not. Okay, so we've talked about what fake news is, what it looks like, how it spreads, and how you can tell the difference. But did you really learn something? Are you a fake news expert yet or not? So in the following section, I have a bunch of um, quizzes that you can take to test your knowledge to find out if you can tell fake news from real news. So there's the Media Smart, Smart um, Break the Fake quiz. So you can take this quiz to see if you can tell the difference between real and fake news stories. There is the New York Times, Can You Spot the Deceptive Facebook Post quiz? Um, so you'll go in and you'll see if you can tell which is a real Facebook post from an actual um, account and which is a fake Facebook post. 
uh, spot the trolls. This quiz is going to help you to identify um, which counts are genuine and which ones are professional trolls. Um, it gives you a lot of information along the way. So it's really, this one does a really good job of kind of teaching you what to look out for when you're um, reading news articles or reading Facebook posts from different people. Uh, so I do recommend it. Um, the truth game. Okay, so this one is one that is on uh, your phone. It's a mobile application and it works with iPhone and Android. And basically you're going to swipe right for false and you're going to sw swipe left for true. So it's going to give you facts and you're going to swipe on whether it is true or false. So um, quality fact is a, is a fact checking website. So it's one of the ones that I actually listed um, earlier and so they've created this app and it shows you some of the things that they have been asked to fact check basically um, and so you get in on the action and you get to see how you would do with that so this is what the apps icon look like looks like so obviously it's a, an American app but it's still fun nonetheless you can download that from your App Store or the Google Play Store then there's Wonderopolis what is clickbait so this um, is a web page that gives you all sorts of information on what clickbait is, and there's a three-part question uh, quiz that's gonna test your knowledge on clickbait. Learn more, so resources for more information. So on this last page, if you are really interested in, in fake news and, and you really wanna become a, a good critical thinker and, and know your sources, um, I put some more information in these links for you. So you can click on the links and it'll take you to um, other websites that give you more information on fake news. So, um, in the video description today, I've put a link to this PowerPoint for you. So you can just click on the link and open this PowerPoint. You'll be able to scroll through this presentation and click on any of the links that I've put in here today. So you have complete access to everything that is in here. But, that is my presentation on fake news. Um, that is what fake news is. Uh, and how to tell it from real news. So I hope that was helpful. If you have any further technology questions or have a suggestion for a future Savvy Seniors video, you can call me at 705-526-4216, extension 3321, or you can shoot me an email at jwiff at midlandlibrary.com. Thanks for watching this week's episode of Savvy Seniors the show where we tackle technology together. I'll be back next Saturday at 2 p.m. with more technology tips and tricks to make your life easier. Bye for now, Midland, and I'll see you next time.